In this thin section, the pore spaces have been vacuum impregnated with blue stained resin so that they are easily recognised in plain polarised light. Grains are of different types. In plain polarised light, most grains are colourless or brown in colour, but there is another grain which is yellow. This yellow colour was produced when the thin section was placed in a sodium cobaltinitrite solution which stained grains of potassium rich feldspar or K feldspar yellow. Details of the minerals making up the rock are best seen under higher magnification. Note that the grains neither show straight and regular outlines or crystal faces nor have interlocking grains which show a banded appearance. This rock is made up of rounded to subrounded grains, and so it is a sedimentary rock. The rock is made of fine sand grains, that is sand grains less than 0.25 mm in size. Grains are approximately the same size, and so the rock may be described as well sorted. The grains are touching, so the rock has a grain supported fabric. Some of the elongated grains are aligned and form layers through the sedimentary rock, indicating sorting by grain shape during deposition of the original sediment. Grains are made of four main minerals, quartz, feldspar, muscovite mica and biotite mica. In plain polarised light, most of the grains have a low relief, but the micas have moderate relief and so they stand out more than the other minerals. Quartz is recognised by its lack of colour and absence of cleavage. It shows no pleochroism, which means that it doesn't change colour as a stage is rotated. Feldspar grains may be identified in plain polarised light because they are either stained yellow or have a cloudy or turbid appearance. These grains are not pleochroic. Some feldspar grains show a weak cleavage parallel to the long grain edges. Others show irregular fractures. In plain polarised light, the mica grains have moderate relief. They form elongate grains and show strong cleavage parallel to the long grain edges. Muscovite mica is colourless, but it is not pleochroic. Biotite is brown to dark brown and it is pleochroic. Note that it has a darker colour when the cleavage is aligned east-west. In plain polarised light, the blue staining allows you to see the porosity of the rock. Note that the primary porosity has largely been preserved, indicating that there was either little or no cementation. Alternatively, any pore filling cements that originally formed may have been subsequently lost. Oversized pores indicate a secondary porosity. This is caused by dissolution of feldspar grains. Some of the grey coloured pore spaces show deposition of clay minerals. These are likely to be an alteration product from the dissolution of feldspars. Under cross polars, the quartz is identified by its first order grey interference colours and lack of twinning. Some of the grains show an even extinction, others show an undulose extinction pattern. Feldspar is recognised by its first order grey interference colours and twinning. This feldspar grain did not appear as a yellow stained grain under plain polarised light. Under cross polars, it shows multiple or lamella twinning and the grain is plagioclase feldspar. Rotation of the stage in one direction results in the sets of lamellae going dark and reaching extinction. Rotation in the other direction results in alternate lamellae reaching their extinction position. Note that the mineral has an inclined extinction. This means that the mineral goes extinct when the elongate direction of the mineral is neither east-west nor north-south.
This is a different type of feldspar. This feldspar appeared as a yellow stained grain under plain polarised light, so it is potassium rich feldspar or K feldspar. Note that the grain shows cross hatch twinning under crossed polars. Under crossed polars, the muscovite mica shows up to second order interference colours. Biotite mica shows up to mid third order interference colours, but these colours are masked due to the strong body colour of the biotite. Both show parallel or close to parallel extinction. This means that the crystals go into extinction when the elongate gate direction of the mineral is east, west or north, south. In summary, this rock sample is well sorted and texturally mature because it has a small range of grain sizes and is generally composed of rounded to subrounded grains. This rock is made of grains of quartz, muscovite mica, biotite mica and feldspar. It is mineralogically immature because it has a relatively high content of two types of feldspar, which are unstable at Earth's surface. Mineralogically immature sediments may have been deposited close to their source area or may have been rapidly transported and deposited with little reworking. The mixture of quartz grains may indicate more than one source. The relative abundance of feldspar may also suggest a range of sources for the detrital material in this rock. It is worth noting that the muscovite and biotite mica grains mostly derived from metamorphic rocks like schist and phyllite and many igneous rocks too, also suggest a range of sediment sources. The aligned micrograins forming layers through the sedimentary rock indicate that, that there was sorting by grain shape during deposition of the original sediment. The point contact and few long edge grain boundaries with no deformation of elongate grains around the subspherical grains indicates little or no compaction. Primary porosity has been largely preserved. Oversized pores indicate secondary porosity caused by dissolution of feldspar grains. This rock is a sandstone that may be described as a fine-grained subarcosic aronite.